Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Living Arts. I'm your host, Jackie Suarez. Thank you for tuning in. As usual, in Living Arts style, we have a great guest for you. She's been described as a talented diamond in the rough, but I think she's way, way, that's a, a huge understatement. My guest is Natalie Forteza. She's a super cool songstress right here in Westchester. Natalie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. No, um, I've actually, um, your music is so cool. It's so like Sade kind of along those lines, Erica Badu. Mm, thank you. So how mm -hmm. did you develop your style? Tell me about um, how you developed your interest in music. Um, it's kind of a, a long road and it's still um, continuing as um, music is and any of the arts go. There's always an involvement and it's never really done. Mm -hmm. um, but I, music was always a big part of my family and uh, my parents always played music in their house and my family being South American, you know, there's, that was always a huge influence and we always loved um, music, you know, by Babel Gilberto, you know, just to name one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and my grandparents were huge fans of, of music as well. And just through the years, there's just certain things that kind of stick to you. And it was something that I couldn't deny, you know, it was just something that I was in love with always. Um, and then... Uh, it hasn't been until like the past few years where you start to accept where your likes are, you know, and I definitely love that kind of cool, funky uh, groove, but yet it's still in development and trying to fine tune it and really find my place um, in the music scene. So it still okay. continues. Yeah, you described your grandparents as the Fred and Ginger, a Latin version of Fred and Ginger. Yes. So yes. in my mind, that kind of sounded like... Um, Almost like Lucy and Ricky. Yes, <laughs> but, but absolutely. With, more, <laughs> with a classical tinge on it. Um, yes. You've mentioned um, just your love of the classics. So what, mm -hmm. would, what would that be exactly? Well, I, um, I kind of had a life-changing experience. It was one summer I spent in Venezuela where my mother's side of the family is from. And uh, Fred and Ginger, who we call my grandparents, um, because they were incredible dancers. And, oh, okay. Um, they loved um, American culture in terms of music and, and movies. And um, my grandfather was a huge fan of, um, <clears throat> of jazz standards. So he introduced me to Natalie Cole had just come out with her tribute album to her father. Mm -hmm. And it was relatable to me because it was a female vocalist, of course. Um, but it was the kind of melodies and songs that were attainable to me because at, at the time, I couldn't identify with many singers, you know, popular singers, at, you know, in that present time. And I remember learning every song from the top to the bottom of, uh, of Natalie's album, and I just fell in love with it. And I felt like I could start to discover myself through that album. And I, my grandfather was so happy because that was the music that he loved, and that was the music that my grandmother and my grandfather used to dance to. Um, so it's uh, a huge part of where I come from. But yeah, I can, I can leave that in a place and still continue to follow a path to where I feel like I belong musically. Okay, so kind of um, just using Natalie Cole as an example, um, she took her father's songs and kind of put a, a modern spin on it. Mm -hmm. And I think you've kind of tried to do that as well. I've tried to, yeah. That, that's what I'd, I'd like to do, you know, to be able to take... I think music gets recycled at some point, you know, um, you can take little pieces from here and there, and eventually it just becomes yours just because you are you. Nobody can do what you do. Right, well, you're doing something unique to it, too, because you're singing it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've heard people take, let's say, Aretha Franklin, um, Joni Mitchell or something, and they'll cover it. And uh, it's always a nice new experience because it's almost like you're getting reintroduced to an old friend. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's always nice because I, I picture, like, um, Wendy Williams says that you know there are artists that are friends in her head, mm -hmm. and it's almost like sometimes I put on certain types of music, and it's like I try and shut out everything else. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm listening, I'm having like you know, reminiscing about something, yes. or it's soothing me in some way. Yeah. So, uh, what are you up to now as far as your music career? Because it's so inspiring to finally come to realize that you do want to be a singer. You're writing your own songs, and to set that in motion. So, wh how, how does that happen? What are you doing now? Uh, it takes a huge amount of patience. Um, <laughs> it takes a long time to be able to build that concept and then be able to find the people who can help you put that together. So luckily over the past 
five or six years, I've been able to put myself in the circle of, of just great people who are, number one, encouraging and are nurturing um, and kind of develop your skills and then, you know, you have your tastes. And then um, I've been able to, to work with different people to build a foundation to particular songs um, so I can build upon that and then develop a style and a sound. And then that's just the beginning. After that, then you're able to kind of really delve into the real work. And that's just really letting the music take over. Um, and then that, that will be the most creative part of it. And then hopefully be able to record. So it's still in the very early stages of, of writing, you know, um, original songs. And then hopefully soon we'll be able to record and then do the process that follows that, which is all promotion, and just playing and, and getting it out there and getting it heard. Right, I think, you know, I guess most artists would say that putting your style together is the most important part, but if mm. you don't meet the right people or get seen in the right way and promote yourself, then no one will hear it. Right. So I guess um, with trying to be seen in local venues, um, how did you begin to do that? I actually um, started playing with a trio, a local band here in uh, Peekskill, actually. I, uh, Doug Smith. Is uh, he'll be happy I give him a shout out. Um, <laughs> My old friend Doug Smith, yes. I know him well. <laughs> yes. I know him well. He's a sweetheart, he's dear to me. <laughs> and uh, he had a, a trio he was uh, playing with, and just by a chance meeting, um, and soon after that, he welcomed me into his little family. And I was able to reintroduce myself to a, a public position in terms of performing. And I was able to kind of fall in love with it again because I hadn't performed since high school. Um, so it's like getting on a bike again. Mm -hmm. And then after a little while, it, would, it fulfilled a certain place, but it still felt like there was so much more to discover. Um, so I just started in, in um, excuse me, uh, just trying to find different circles to socialize in and find other people like me and, you know, find people who are driven like I was and have a similar tastes and, you know, and that's basically the circle that I'm in now. Mm -hmm. um, um, Aki, who you will you know, get to see in a little while, has been great, has been a great friend and just a, a great um, partnership musically and uh, a lot of this is just experimentation. Mm -hmm. um, and then my other two members, Eric Perez plays drums, he's also lived locally as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anthony Candulo plays bass and is also a Westchester resident. Um, all fabulous musicians, great gentlemen, you know, allow me to be myself. We make mistakes together, mm -hmm. we have fun together, and, you know, we enjoy um, the gifts that we've been given. Absolutely. You know, everyone has to do something, I guess, to support themselves mm -hmm. while we're all, you know, becoming famous. Mm. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> how um, is it difficult for you to work into your schedule, rehearsals and kind of organizing everyone? It's very difficult, yeah, because you have... Um, and your family obligations, of right, course. Uh, right, you can't forget, you know, your family life and, and the things that you need to do. And you have four individuals who all have goals and, and they've got to make ends meet. Um, and uh, I have a, a day job, you know, mm -hmm. in the meantime. Uh, hoping that music will be that day job, but um, but in the meantime, just try and make it work. You have to fit it in in every nook and cranny that you can find, because uh, art is just one of those things that if you don't make time for it, it's not going to make time for you. Absolutely, you know you can be thinking about something and want something, but if you don't try to right. kind of get off the curb and, and move towards it. Not like someone's going to come knocking on your door like, here's right. everything you want. Exactly. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> right, if only, if only. Right. So um, the Natalie Forteza band, um, how long have you been playing together? We've been playing together for, um, I think maybe about a year and a half. Yeah, about a year and a half. And uh, it, it was just from straight out of the gate. We just had great chemistry. And half the band's been playing with... Uh, have been playing together mm -hmm. for a long, long time. So mm -hmm. the, there was a foundation already to that chemistry. And, uh, and I, like I said before, I think just our love for music mm -hmm. and, uh, and the companionship is, is right. Um, it's been just seamless. It's nice when you click with someone and you can, you know, especially your, you know, your bandmates, you're going to be spending, you know, hopefully a lot of time together in the studio. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, your music sounds 
I hate to say that it sounds like something else, but was Sade a, a big influence in putting together your sound, or was that something that, I mean, I guess as we... Yeah, she, she definitely was. Um, another moment in my life um, that came to light was my, it was a, a birthday, I think. I think it was one of my birthdays, and I have an older brother, and mm -hmm. I have a younger sister as well, but my older brother, being a huge music fan like I am, he had given me Sade's Love Deluxe album, which was in 94 <laughs> or 95, something like that. And I fell in love with it. It was another album that from track one to track nine, I'm pretty sure that album has nine tracks, um, I fell in love with. I, I would listen to every single note, and I really identified with her because, again, at the time, the majority of the singers at the time were really big singers, you mm -hmm. know, really huge voices. They could acrobatically do anything. And that's not me as a singer. And it's mm -hmm. really hard to be confident and to believe that you can make it as a singer if you don't have a voice like that. Mm -hmm. And listening to her and her band, um, because mm -hmm. it's not just about her, you know, she's amongst three other musicians as well. Right. Um, they've layered each other to make something even greater. And she could do that without having to do all these acrobatics. It was about... When you say vocal acrobatics, do you mean like Patti LaBelle breaking glass? Breaking kind of? glass, yeah, and the ups and the downs, mm -hmm. and, which is a beautiful craft. Range. Yeah, yeah, people mm -hmm. who have great range, and, and that's a beautiful gift, and that's an incredible craft mm -hmm. that I don't take anything away from. It's just something that I know that I'm not capable of. Okay. So I have to live within my means. And I was able to really identify with her. And her sound is so timeless. And that was something that really, really appealed to me. So that's definitely been a huge inspiration. You know, I think when her album dropped, it, because I remember it clearly, and I remember falling in love with it as well, it kind of really just struck everyone. It was almost like it came out of nowhere. Right. And there were so many different songs that, you know, just really grabbed everyone. Mm hmm So are you studying any with any vocal coaches or? I am, actually. At the moment, I'm uh, studying with Sharon Bryant, who uh, had a, a great career as well uh, with Atlantic Star and is a solo art artist. And she's an incredible soul, and uh, she also knows how, how to kick my butt a little bit, too. <laughs> so um, that's been great. And so how long have you been working with her? Not too long, actually. Only about, um, about a month and a half. Okay. Yeah. So prior to that, you mentioned uh, earlier when we were setting up that you went to school for communications. I did. Yes, that's something that we have in common. So where do you uh, go to school? I uh, actually started school at SUNY Purchase, and I was there for a year and a half. And then I transferred to um, College of Mount St. Vincent in Riverdale. And mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to study. I didn't want to, I didn't see myself as a business major. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to take um, managerial statistics. So uh, I kind of figured that communications was probably the closest thing to what um, I thought at the time I would want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it was great. It was a, a great school. I had wonderful profes professors. My classes were great. And, and we had a, a studio on the campus. And we got to produce our own shows and mm -hmm. get behind the camera and, and do very much like this kind of scenario and have conversations with fellow students. And it was great. But it, it, it still didn't fulfill that. That space that your music does. Your own artistic expression, you weren't mm -hmm. able to hone it yet or you didn't identify it yet. Yeah. Um, it's occurred to me just in our conversations that you've, you're kind of out there and you've got your finger on what's going on in Westchester as far as up and coming artists. Mm. Tell me who's inspiring you now or someone that I should be keeping an eye on or my audience should be keeping an eye on. Mm, I would have to say, oh, that's a good question. There is I know there's a, a couple of people you've brought to my attention. So. Well, there's <laughs> actually there's a few of them. Actually, there's probably a long list of them. Uh, one of them um, I'm going to see tomorrow, and I know who you know very well is Bob Baldwin. You know, mm -hmm. he's he's going to be playing in Westchester tomorrow. He's a uh, a new friend as well, and he's been very supportive. Um, another band that I'm a huge fan of is Live Society, uh, a group of eight incredibly talented musicians. Eight. Eight. Yeah, wow. it's a it's a big group. Um, and they bring a great time, incredible vocalists, and any time that they play, it's just a, a great time. And I was telling somebody else the other day that the singers actually are an inspiration to me because they have this freeness and they have this um, real light-hearted 
direction when they sing, you know, and uh, it's, it's inspiring. Um, kind of free form, they're not afraid to make mistakes and they're just really having exactly, a good time just, with it. Exactly, they're just out there, you know, and I think sometimes when you're in your craft, you focus so much that it's really, it's really hard to let go. Mm -hmm. And then there's other people who are just letting go just comes so much easier. What would you describe their music as, or who, who could you compare them to? Um, I'd say that they'd be a, a great mix of, like, um, Maroon 5 meets Amos Lee meets <laughs> the script. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they've got this pop, but a real funk um, angle to them. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And I'm going to have to keep... Uh, it's I can't I can't imagine though so many artists in playing in a local area like that's that's a that's a huge group to accommodate in a place. Yeah, yeah. I can I don't know how they do it, but they make it happen. So they inspire all the rest of us when you know four people can't get together. Um, they must figure something out. So, uh, but um, yeah, there's there's a lot of great music. Wally Ali and the Tambourine Band is also a phenomenal group. Mm -hmm. uh, also, a bunch of new friends and old friends friends within that um, group as well, and uh, so th there's a lot of inspiration. It's a kind of like a tight knit group of artists, pretty much in Westchester. It seems like everyone has they've either played with or they've seen or they're kind of know one another. Is that that kind of feeling that we have here? Because it is kind of special. Yeah, and, and it's funny because it, I feel like I'm the new one in the group. And I'm like, wow, you know this one and you know that one, you know. But to them, it's kind of like, well, yeah, of course, you know. <laughs> I think it's like once once you're in, you're in. Yeah. Um, and then it's just a really big community. And as you work more often, you, you know, you build stronger relationships and no matter how much time goes by that you haven't seen this one, you just kind of reconnect instantaneously. And, uh, you know, obviously because music is the common denominator. Right. Um, but it's a really beautiful thing because you always kind of feel like there's, you're never alone. You know, mm -hmm. there's always somebody going through the same thing as, as, as you. Um, and you can always connect with someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you started kind of your performances at Town Crier, is that right? Yes. Yeah, that's true. And uh, he's been kind of, he's said some really fantastic things about you, the owner. I'm, I forget his name right now. Uh, Phil Seganer. So what was that like, you know, starting to perform there? That was great. It's a, a beautiful room, um, sound-wise, and it's just very warm, and he creates the kind of atmosphere that you feel like people are really there to support you, um, as opposed to being in a place where you're part of the background, wh which serves its purpose, too. But when you get a chance to really showcase um, yourself, you know, mm -hmm. you kind of get a chance to finally hear yourself, which is very different than practicing at home. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a platform to stand on, it, it does something to you. Um, so the fact that he invited me to come and I got to open for great people like um, Stefan Rembel, who wrote the so soundtrack to uh, Vicky Cristina Barcelona, which was Woody Allen's movie. That oh, was an awesome movie. Mm -hmm. And he also did another song for uh, Midnight in Paris, mm -hmm. um, who's a brilliant guitar player. And Mose Allison, who's a legend, you know, and that was a huge honor to be able to open for him. Um, so just having that opportunity just to play uh, was a nice way for me to um, build on my confidence and just explore my own range and styles. And, and, and that's like we talked about before, that's, that's mm -hmm. the whole thing, that you have to start somewhere. And right. you need somebody to believe in you enough to let you do that outside of your own home. So um, So how did you meet him? I met him through Doug Smith, actually. Oh, okay. And, uh, Brother Doug. Brother Doug. <laughs> and he was doing some open mics up there, and we had practiced some songs since we were playing live, and he mm -hmm. says, you know, why don't we go up there one night? Mm -hmm. um, the rest is history. Well, that was some start, you know, and uh, a lot of people have been actually talking about you in the music industry and people that I've spoken with, and they're like, hey, mm. have you heard or do you know? Mm. And that's actually not how I came to know you, because we met through a, a mutual friend. Mm. But, um, so there's definitely murmurings out there about your career. Oh. So uh, you should be inspired by that. Thank um, you. Time is uh, kind of winding away here, and I wanted to give our audience um, just an idea of where you're going to be performing. Tell them about the lovely space at St. George's, mm. um, the date, and things that are going to be happening with your band. Yes. Well, I will be at the at the winery on Wednesday, April 11th at uh, 8 o'clock we go on. And it's a gorgeous uh, restoration of an old church, and they've done a beautiful job. It's an incredible room to perform in. 
Um, it's different than many venues in the fact that it's an elevated stage, mm -hmm. so it, it presents this real show mm -hmm. impression uh, on, on the audience. So it gives us a job as musicians to kind mm -hmm. of take things to the next level. When you say real show, kind of like if you were performing at, let's say, the Paramount or something along those age? Yeah, not not yet to that grandeur. I mean, I hope I hope that that's down the road, but um, but it's a great performance space. It's a great performance space, yeah, and, and 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 the group of people who come there are are incredibly supportive. They they go there for the music. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And where's the next place you'll be performing? After that, um, we'll be here in Peekskill, actually, mm -hmm. at Twelve Grapes on June 29th, I believe. Okay. And how can my audience reach you or find out information about you? I have uh, my own website. It's natalieforteza.com. And also you're on Facebook and as well, right? I'm on right? Facebook as well. <laughs> we of were course. talking about that earlier. <laughs> um, you know, as usual, I just want to thank uh, my audience for tuning in. Um, I'm inspired by you guys, and I'm inspired by all the people that I'm meeting. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. You can reach uh, me at livingarts.westchester at gmail.com. Uh, I want to thank the Living Arts crew that are the fa most fabulous crew on the w in the world. Um, tune in. You can catch old episodes at YouTube, Living Arts in Westchester. Thank you for tuning in. Peace. Talk to you soon. Black and Gold by Sam Sparrow. 
And uh, let me just take a moment here to introduce uh, my bandmate here. This is Aki Burmese, who came up here all the way from Brooklyn, and uh, he's a strong driving force in our band. <laughs> and um, we want to continue our music segment here and introduce uh, an original piece that was written by myself and Claude Stein. This is uh, your song. Straight. 